QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 item lists. Let's get into it with Intuit. QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown, selecting open windows list. We're now going to take a look at another list type item. This one being the item lists. So lists, you'll recall, is a term that uh, has a meaning for QuickBooks it may not have in accounting in and of itself due to the drop down here and the items that will be included in the lists. One of those major items being the item list, which again is another term that you may not hear when you're learning just financial accounting because the financial accounting is usually focused in on the debits and credits and the recording of the transactions to create the financial statements. Whereas the item lists are there used in kind of more of a logistic type of way in order to make the data input process for things like the invoices and the sales receipts much easier. So the items lists are going to be very important for the QuickBooks process and they're typically going to be put together in the setup process. So that's one of the things we will do when we set up a new company file. We will put together uh, the item lists which will include typically inventory items and sales items, things that we sell. The goal of the item list is to make the data input as easy as possible. In other words, if you have things set up such as the items properly, then when you go into something like an invoice here, it'll be a much easier to populate. If I open up this invoice, for example, and go to the prior section, this item right here was set up in the item lists. And this will label out the inventory item so that if someone populates this invoice, they don't really they don't need to know what the item is to set it up they don't need to know how to set up the item they just need to know what item is being sold this in this case it being a guitar so if someone comes up and you know you're selling that particular guitar that's all they need to know to populate the invoice they also don't need to know the effect of this form on the financial statements and the effect of this form on the financial statements will also be driven largely by the setting up of the items so from a logistical standpoint the items uh, are going to be really important from the QuickBooks setup. However, note, again, they're going to be something that will be set up when you start up the company file. And so if you're taking over a company file or working within the company file and the company has already been set up, the items are likely already in the system and you're basically learning how to use the items. The, the time that you really get into the setting up of the items, especially inventory items and service items, is when you start a new company file and you're thinking about how you're going to be charging clients, how you're going to be billing clients, and uh, when you're adding a new something that you're going to be that you're going to be adding. Off, oftentimes, that being a new service that you will be providing or a new uh, inventory item. So, if we go to the item lists up top, we're going to go to the or lists up top, and then to the item lists. This is going to be what the item lists look like. The major items we're going to be focusing in on are going to be the things that we sell. So the things that we're going to sell are going to be the uh, service items and inventory items. These are going to be the main type of things that people think of when you think of the item list. The things that we sell, things that will populate the invoice and the sales receipt. So I'm going to adjust the columns here a little bit so we can see these items a little bit uh, more clearly. And then if we select a service item, so the item type is here, this is going to be a service type item guitar lessons that we're going to provide so that's going to be a service that's provided no inventory involved i'm going to click on it and you can either hit the drop down which is a rise up and edit that item or you can right click on the item and go to the editing of the item so there we have it then the drop down is on a service item here it's, it's already selected so it's it's uh grayed out because it's already been created and this is going to be the guitar lessons we're going to have angela we're going to say is our guitar instructor we set this up as you might basically set up something for a job cost type system and we'll do this when we go through the practice problem meaning we have other people that are working there guitar instructors that are going to have to give us their time and then we're going to basically bill the clients the people that are giving getting the lessons based on the timesheet provided for us so in this case we want to say this is the item of angela's guitar lessons and then we might have a rate for her guitar lessons 150 and we might charge the 150 per hour or we might charge it in some other kind of grouped kind of setup. And notice oftentimes if you're charging your own system, if you're setting up your bookkeeping system, for example, or accounting system or a law firm that is set up in this type of fashion where you have a service item, typically you're going to think first thought is I'm going to do this by hour and I'm going to set up the number of hours and then track the number of hours and then have the billable hours. You can do that, 
But note that when you think about billable hours, it could be kind of confusing because you could have days where you're, you're doing better than other days. And you always have that process of, am I overcharging or undercharging in terms of the hour that is assigned? If you can then charge, make it more standardized, possibly charge this by lesson, standardize the lesson length, and then charge by how many lessons were provided rather than trying to track the hours, it could be easier. If you do something for like bookkeeping in that format, you can charge by hour by doing the bookkeeping, or you might try to count the number of transactions using a transaction detail report and try to say, hey, if you fall within this range of transactions, I'm gonna group my items by range of transaction, and then I'm gonna charge you by my monthly, do, you know, monthly work for the range of transaction. That could be a lot easier, or tax forms. Obviously, when you do taxes, you might charge by hour, or you might charge by a cost per form that is gonna be used if you charge per form, again, it's going to be a lot easier to basically standardize and create the invoice. So that's going to be the general item. If I then close this out, if I went to the home page and then I was to charge somebody, I can then go to an invoice or sales receipt, whichever is applicable. And I can say this is going to be any customer that we have. I'll say Anderson. I'm not going to actually record this. But then down here in the item, we can simply say this is going to be Angela's guitar lessons. So there we have it. Now, if this was per hour, then I would need Angela's sheet to tell me how many hours were worked. And then we can put in the number of hours here so it can then calculate the, the total amount. Uh, if this was by lesson, then again, we can count just simply the number of lessons. And that would be less tracking that would be required. And we can just basically standardize the number of lessons, which might be easier than, than tracking time, which is the traditional method for like a job cost system in a law firm or accounting firm. Uh, so there, so I'm going to close this back out. I'm not going to record it. And then if we go to the inventory items down here, they get a little bit more complex. Now, note just one more thing with this item. Uh, I'll go back into the service item and uh, edit the item. Notice that uh, this is going to be going to another account down here to the guitar lessons. So this item is saying that when you charge for this, for this particular item, it's going to hit an income statement account which is going to be the uh, income account. It's like a guitar lesson account. So this is the income account. There's no tax that's going to be affected because it's a service item. Generally, service items do, are not subject to sales tax, taxing the customer for the service item. So if I close this back out and I go back to the home page and I was to like, take a look at an invoice, let's make that one again to Anderson. And I was going to say this is, I think it was Angela was on guitar lessons, four hours, this item would drive the account that would be affected. The invoice means accounts receivable would go up. The item means that the other side would go to that particular income statement account that we just saw for basically the guitar lesson. So that drives where it's going to go. I'm going to close this back out and say no. If you did that same thing on the sales receipt, it would look pretty much the same for a sales receipt. But the sales receipt then would be increasing a cash account, either undeposited funds or cash, the item then driving the other side, which would be going to the income account that would be assigned within the item. So closing this back out, inventory items have a lot more going on in it if you're tracking inventory within the system. So if you have a perpetual inventory system, you're tracking uh, within uh, QuickBooks Desktop, which would use a weighted average method. Let's choose one of these inventory items, right click and edit that item. And so we could see it's an inventory part item. So here we have the item name, uh, and that's going to be like the abbreviated name might go here. The description will go here. This is going to be the purchase description, which would be on a bill or purchase order. And then we have the cost. This is how much we buy it for. So now we have two sides of this thing. We have how much we're going to buy the thing for, how much we're going to sell the thing for, which are basically these two sides. This description is going to be on the purchase order and on the, the buying side of things, the bill. This description is going to be on the sales side of things, which would be an invoice or a sales receipt. And so then the cost is going to be applicable when we buy the inventory, which means it's going to be applicable when the uh, inventory assets goes up, the asset account goes up for inventory, and when we sell it, but it's not going to be the sales price, it's going to be the expense of us consuming it. That's going to be the cost of goods sold, the expense of us consuming the inventory. The sales price then, of course, will be applicable when we sell it, increasing the accounts receivable and increasing some income account, that income account being sales, an income basically line item. So you could see the this item drives everything that you're going to be doing 
with the inventory. So it's going to be really important for the inventory item. So if I close this back out, then if I have the item set up correctly here, if I go back to the home page, you can imagine basically if you're working in a store that uh, someone brings up a guitar that they're going to buy at the store and you're at, let's do a sales receipt this time, which you can imagine doing if you're at like the cash register, you're just going to go, all right, well, I'm going to go into the sales receipt and the data input now should be as easy as possible uh, if the item is set up correctly, right? We would just say, all right, customer, who are you? Anderson, if I have to add a new customer, I can add it as we go. I'm not going to change the undeposited funds here, the date, I'll keep that. And then we would simply add the item, whatever the guitar is. We'd say, let's hit ELP. We're out of stock on the ELP, but let's just say, okay. And there we have it. So we have the uh, ELP and that would be it. And it would be easy to populate, even though the sales receipt is doing a whole lot of things. The sales receipt is increasing the undeposited funds uh, by the full amount here. And the other side is going to be going to, to revenue or sales, which is driven by the item, but only for the 500, the sales amount that is on the item. That difference, that $25 difference is basically being driven by the item as well, by it saying that it is a taxable item and then another item telling us what type of tax you know it is, setting up the tax at that 5%. And then we also we also know that the inventory is going to be going down by an amount that is not on this form at all, but again is driven by the item. The item is also going to be decreasing the inventory and recording the other side to cost of goods sold. So the item is doing a whole lot of work here to make the data input really easy. So you can imagine someone at the cash register, you know, doing ten things at one time and you know chewing gum and whatnot, you know, and put the thing in there and it's not a problem. Uh, but all the things that are actually happening to the financials just by that data input is fairly substantial. And again, that's driven by, in essence, in large part, by setting up the items properly. So I'm going to close that back out and say no. Also note that when we purchase things, the purchase order on the purchasing side, if we buy the guitar from the vendors, will also be driven by the item. So if, I, if I'm then going to buy something from a vendor, the purchase order, I could say I want to go to Epiphone. And then we would add the purchase order once again the elp which we need more right now we said we were out of stock notice it now populates at the purchase price which is the four thousand and it gives us that sales description which once again was driven by the item so all i need to do is say i need another elp and i don't need i don't need to set anything else up because we've bought these in the past we're going to send out the purchase order for that and again the data input very straightforward given the fact that the item is set up for us closing this back out i'm going to say no and then and then obviously if we were to we enter a bill we'd have a, a similar type of situation when we pay basically for uh the inventory so if i was to set up a bill for example and i was going to be paying oh, let's do this setting up a bill here not the pay bill setting up a bill to uh the elp e, um, to epiphone epiphone and then i'd have to go to the items tab now notice again this terminology is on the second tab here which can be a little confusing because really when you think about the second tab in the context of a bill and you go to the items you're really thinking about inventory item usually and so and why do you need a second tab because it's going to be tracking not only the account that will be affected as would be the case for the first tab which would be the inventory account but we'll also be tracking the sub account tracking the number of units not just the dollar amount but the number of units that we're buying so that we can track our inventory on a perpetual basis system. So we'd have the ELP once again, and it would populate here uh, in the bill item if we were entering a bill for it on the purchasing side. So once again, I'm going to I'm going to close that out and go back to the item lists. So we'll spend a good deal of time base populating these items. These are really uh, essential components to to making your data input a lot a lot easier. And many people don't have a lot of experience with them if they even if they've done bookkeeping because they've that, you know, you've taken over the bookkeeping of a system that's already been set up and therefore the items have already been set up. If the items have not properly been set up or you're starting the bookkeeping system from scratch, then you want to, you're going to want to spend some time here to think about how you can set up the items as, you know, well as you can so that, and your goal when you're thinking about how well are they set up is how easy is it for me then just to do the data input process. I should be saving time on the data input process due to the fact that the items have been set up well now note those are the two major kind of items down here you also have the items related to the sales tax so when we sell the when we set up the sales tax 
uh, we'll show you how to basically set up the the sales tax item and that item was driving as you saw on the on the invoice if I go back to the home page and go to the create uh, invoice and back to the prior one this sales tax and that five percent is being driven by an item